soon as we got back to our museum, we assessed with the area that we already allocated the funding for, and we updated our plans that we already had in place for doing the works. We then started to get um, people involved to clear out the area, um, get it sort of into an, a, a fit state for us to be able to access and get around. We also started um, getting in touch with craning companies and companies to do non-destructive testing of the gates and checking of the seals and the brickwork of the actual uh, dock itself. So we really sort of hit the ground running when we came back. We, we were quite lucky in that we already had a plan prepared by one of our volunteers for how we carry out the work, so that, that gave us a good stepping stone. And when we compete, it, it should be a, a really, really good project. Um, it will feel, um, it will provide the museum with a, a very good facility that we can use for the repair and conservation of our boats. And also provides a very good facility um, for this area as well. Um, dry docks are something a, a bit lacking, slightly, uh, with, particularly within this area. And also brings a part of the site that hasn't been um, sort of site backwater um, back into use. So it will be very, very good when it, it's back in commission. It, you know, it will, once we put the, uh, the gates back into commission, it will be a, a fully functional dry dock area, which, as I said, would be a very good facility for this area. Yeah. Um, we can, we've got some uh, boats that we're already thinking of using the area to uh, conserve. One is uh, George, one of our, our wide boats we're talking potentially of uh, doing inside this dry dock. Um, also, it provides a facility for us to maybe possibly um, look um, to provide for commercial use to other people who, who might need to do work on their own boat. So George would be our next big thing, which uh, as a museum that would take us quite a big while, it's an historic wide boat. Um, but then more boats in our collection, this facility to um, particularly do blacking and corking, which is one of the specific aspects you get involved with with this type of boat, we'll be able to do very uh, easily in the future. As I mentioned earlier, it's very good that we've been able to get an area of the site um, that was previously, uh, as I mentioned, a bit of a backwater back into commission. So for our visitors, it's very good to see something that we can uh, was previously a, a dead water area. Um, but also to be able to see work going on in a different part of the site. We already have a boatyard here at the museum, and this area is even slightly even more publicly accessible, so people can see that work going on. And in terms of our activities, in terms of what, uh, conservation of boats, it's immensely helped it as, as you would imagine being able to actually work on a, a boat in a dry dock is a much easier situation for our um, staff and volunteers but also is uh, an area where we can actually get into things that we possibly previously couldn't do so as I mentioned things like corking and blacking which have been quite a challenge for us to do in the past because we have an area here in site but we have the permission of various landowners to be able to use that facility we can now do it when and when uh, we want.